Welcome. My name is Mark DePew. I'm the oral historian here at the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library. And I'm also somebody who's fascinated by the story of Abraham Lincoln and his commanding generals during the Civil War. He knows that the Western theater is just as important as everything that's been going on in Northern Virginia. And in the Western theater, there's one man that has rose to the occasion, and that's obviously Ulysses S. Grant. Grant gets his start at Belmont, a very minor battle, but then convinces the brass in the West to follow the Confederates down the two main rivers in Tennessee, that being the Tennessee and the Cumberland River. So Grant has success at, the, at Fort Henry. He has success at Fort Donelson. He now controls those two rivers and drives south to Shiloh. It's at Shiloh where Grant kind of loses his focus a little bit and is caught by surprise by the Confederate Army under uh, General Albert Sidney Johnston. The first day of the battle goes very poorly, but Grant, among all of his generals, he's the only one who is really not discouraged and says, we'll get him the next day, and in fact, he does. After that battle, we find that General Halleck, who's commanding in the West, decides he needs to relieve Grant. There's rumors about drinking. There was the fact that he was caught by surprise at, surprise at Shiloh in that first day. So he relieves Grant. Not too long after that, though, Lincoln makes a decision that he needs to reshuffle his senior generals, and he restores Grant to a field command in the West. And he simply says, I can't spare this man. He fights. Both Grant and Lincoln knew a lot about failure early in their lives. In Grant's case, he graduated from the United States Military Academy at West Point in 1843, was a staff officer during the Mexican War, so saw some action, but very limited. In 1848, he married Julia Dent, and then in 1854 was posted in California, a very lonely man in California, it's there that he's reported to start drinking. He was not able to hold his liquor very well. He quickly became drunk after just one or two drinks. He had a failure while he was out in California. In 1854, Grant resigned his regular army commission and moved back to the St. Louis area to be with Julia and the family. After a string of failures, he took a job as a store clerk at his father's leather goods shop in Galena, Illinois. It was there in 1861 when the war began, and Grant quickly rose through the ranks, as we mentioned a little bit earlier. Success after success, he was winning victories in the West. By the time we get done with the Battle of Shiloh, Grant spends his next year trying to figure out how to get to the important citadel of Vicksburg, which controlled the Mississippi River. Grant just as Lincoln understood that it was the control of the Mississippi River that was the key to success in the West. He had several failures in the winter of 1862 and into early 1863, but the failures did satisfy one requirement. It kept his army busy while he was at it. And then he tried the most risky thing that any general had done in the Civil War up to that point. He decided to sail the gunboats past the guns at Vicksburg, but marching his army well to the south of Vicksburg and to cross at Grand Gulf. Now, he actually crossed a little bit south of there, but once he finally got his army across the Mississippi River and into Mississippi itself, that's when the story becomes especially interesting. He could have gone straight north. He could have gone south and hooked up with General Banks and his army in uh, New Orleans. Instead, he decided to cut his supply lines entirely, something that was radical at the time. Nobody had thought that that was ever possible, certainly wise to do. March northeast towards Jackson, defeat the Confederates there, split the Confederate forces, and then march straight west to Vicksburg and lay Vicksburg under siege. All the while, he's, his army is living off the land. And if you recall, just a day or two earlier, the Union Army had met great victory at Gettysburg itself. All of this is something that General, that uh, 
Abraham Lincoln is following very closely. And here is what Lincoln told General Dan Sickles when Sickles was recovering from a serious injury after the Battle of Gettysburg. Lincoln has this great quote, and you can hear the personal side of Lincoln in this particular quote. Some of our folks think him slow and want me to remove him. But to tell the truth, I kind of like U.S. Grant. He doesn't worry or bother me. He isn't shrieking for reinforcements all the time. He takes what troops we can safely give him, considering our big job all around, and we have a pretty big job in this war, and does as best he can with what he's got, and doesn't grumble and scold all the while. Yes, I confess, I like General Grant. U.S. Grant. <laughs> Uncle Sam Grant. That's a very personal sounding President Lincoln as he's talking to General Sickles, who's laying in his bed at the time. Now, we should remember that this is Sickles' account. So whether or not that's exactly what President Lincoln said to Sickles at the time, it's a matter of some historical debate. But this is not under debate. This is the letter that President Lincoln wrote to General Grant shortly after that battle. My dear General, I do not remember that you and I ever met personally. I write this now as a grateful acknowledgement for the almost inestimable service you have done this country. I wish to say a word further. When you first reached the vicinity of Vicksburg, I thought you should do what you finally did, march the troops across the neck, run the batteries with the transports, and thus go below. And I never had any faith, except a general hope, that you knew better than I, that the Yazoo Pass expedition and the like could succeed. When you got below and took Port Gibson, Grand Gulf, and vicinity, I thought you should go down the river and join General Banks. And when you turned northward, east of the Big Black, I feared it was a mistake. I now wish to make the personal acknowledgement that you were right and I was wrong. Yours very truly, A. Lincoln. After the tremendous victory at Vicksburg, Grant is the Union's favorite general. And he follows up that victory with another one at Chattanooga in December. By this time, Lincoln is still looking for that one senior commander who can bring everything together and he obviously then looks to Grant. Shortly after that, we find that Congress has authorized a lieutenant general position, and there's only one choice, that has to be General Grant. And in March of 1864, Grant was ordered east to meet with Lincoln, and on March 8th, he arrived unnoticed in Washington, D.C. with his son Fred. Dressed in a disheveled uniform, he checked into Willard's Hotel. The clerk, unimpressed, gave him a small room on the top floor. Then they turned the sign-in register around and Grant signs in, U.S. Grant and Son, Galena, Illinois. When he turned it back around, the clerk noticed who had signed in, changed his demeanor, and assigns Grant to the hotel's best room. At 9.30, Grant goes to the White House where a reception was being held. He meets Lincoln for the first time ever. And Lincoln's comment to him, this is General Grant, is it? And Grant replies, yes, it is. By that time, he is the center of public attention for all of those who are in attendance at the reception. And he is for the rest of the evening, as he's almost crushed in the process. He's finally told to climb up on a sofa so the crowd could see him better. Now, you can imagine General Grant is feeling very uncomfortable. Um, he's not used to this kind of spotlight at all. But what's really important now is what's going to happen next when you have to have the command in the field. Uh, Grant decides to leave General Meade in titular control of the Army of the Potomac while he is going to follow on very closely after that. And the first battle afterwards is going to go by the name of the Wilderness Battle, the Wilderness Campaign. 
once again, and it's fought at the same territory that the Chancellorsville battle one year before had actually been fought. So you're actually, in some cases, seeing the skeletons of the dead soldiers from the previous battle on that battlefield. It is once again a brutal battle, and it is touch and go. But most people would say that the Confederates got the better of the Union Army and of General Grant. Once again, General Lee proves to be a better tactician than General Grant did at that particular moment. Now, what has happened all the time, every time that the Union Army gets defeated in the East, it licks its wounds, it retreats, and it regroups. But in this case, something unique happens. And it happens on the evening of the second day of the battle. General Grant, on his horse, with some staff officers, riding down a road, and suddenly, the troops realize that General Grant is not going north. He's going to lead his army further south. He is not going to let this defeat stop him from taking the war to the Confederates and to General Lee. And you hear this wonderful quote that really illustrates exactly how the men felt as they cheer their general on. I do not know that during the entire war I had such a real feeling of delight and satisfaction as in the night when we came to the road leading to Spotsylvania Courthouse and turned to the right. After that moment, it's obvious that Lincoln has found his commander, a commander who understands that the army, the entire army, all of the armies across the entire southern campaign theater need to be taking the war aggressively against the Confederates. Grant is that man.